Welcome to District 32, Immersion, inspiration for ambitious business owners with big dreams. Hello, I'm Lorraine of District 32. I'm here for part three in our growth and expansion series with Dinesh Agarwal of Fortune Advisory Group. How are you, Dinesh? I'm very well, thanks, Lorraine. And yourself? Great, thank you. I'm learning lots from interviewing you. We read this is part three. Part one was around you know when to franchise, what to look out for. Part two was around organic growth, what's important to achieve organic growth, um, what what to look out for, the important parts within that plan. But this part, am I particularly excited because it's really interesting to watch your journey around acquisitions and using acquisition as a growth and expansion strategy of which you're using yourself um Dinesh tell us about acquisitions when do we look at making acquisitions when should we not be looking at acquisitions and what sort of tips can you give us in the process having done it um yourself thank you Lorraine uh, does, yeah definitely thanks for having me back um it's been sort of exciting talking uh, on this subject because this is one of my favorite subjects you know just the growth journey it excites me uh we've discussed uh, sort of various models franchising and and organic growth and uh, talking about growth via acquisition is is definitely uh, an important aspect of the of the entire sort of puzzle of uh, growth journeys uh, now we have taken a combination of organic and and um, uh, acquisition growth strategies, and that generally uh, generally is sort of the way. Because even if uh, if you are heavily uh, acquisition focused, if you ignore the organic growth component, uh, I think it sort of doesn't make sense because it's kind of having a leaking bucket. Uh, so you're putting a lot of capital in the game to acquire. But if you don't have your business set up in a way where it can handle uh, your existing business and servicing your existing clients and customers, which, which, which comes from the focus when you're running an organic growth, because you are a lot conscious about how you're going to acquire a customer, how you're going to retain a customer, and how you're going to service a customer. So if that culture is missing, then you know acquiring uh, more businesses is is definitely uh, you know going to have a leaking bucket element to it because you 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 know you're bringing all that sort of uh, more customers into your business but perhaps uh, not being able to service or retain them in the way you would you would have so the business could have a detriment uh, so there's a lot of and and I'm not saying that it's always perfect you learn along the way we made mistakes. Uh, we've never been perfect uh, in 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 sort of uh, making our business, you know, in a perfect form. Uh, you learn a lot along the way. But uh, if you are quite ambitious uh, in terms of achieving a certain size, a certain target, a certain presence, uh, organic growth is definitely going to be a, a slow process. So we. You know, if we give our own example, we set ourselves a target uh, about, you know, eight years ago. Uh, we want to reach a top 100 accounting firm milestone within, uh, within eight to 10 years. And with a lot of our research and a lot of planning uh, and strategic understanding from where we were as a tiny, small little accounting firm in Joondla, uh, that was a mammoth task, task and would have been sort of over ambitious and maybe not possible just purely based on an organic growth. So you need to be realistic if you're setting a certain target that what are the realistic parameters to be able to achieve it. So if you've done that and you understand that uh, that acquisitions is going to form part of your, your, your journey of target growth, then of course you need to bring that in your planning. Mm -hmm. So, and it is very much same uh, kind of planning when what sort of you need to grow your business organic. So, you know, you're looking at the market size, uh, you know, what sort of customers are available, how you're going to orient and prepare your business, um, you know, the resources, the capital and everything else. 
Similarly, when you're going into an acquisition target, and that's where if the, it's a seller's market, I mean, it could be a buyer's market where uh, a lot of businesses are coming out for sale and, and the buyer has the buying power to negotiate the type of business he wants to take on and on its own terms, maybe hospitality and things like that. Whereas if it's a hot, you know, sort of service industry, whether it's, you know, you call it accounting or, or legal or, or, or insurance or something which is sort of hot IT. Uh, so then, I mean, of course, the seller has a discretion whom they want to set, sell it to. There's a lot of client relationships that come with it. So you need to marry up the culture. Uh, you know, a lot of fit has to be uh, uh, sort of managed. So it's, it's not just that you go out and shop and pick and choose. So you have to sort of target, um, uh, you have to have multiple discussions and uh, relationships. You have to prove your capability of being able to uh, to acquire and retain the business. And it's it's not that you just start a conversation and you don't have the financial capability, the 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 technical capability, and 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 the service orientation to be able to handle that purchase because the seller has built up a business with a with a name and a reputation and a loyal customer base they don't want, they have a more uh, a sort of emotional element to it on top of, you know, they're selling and getting their lifetime uh, saving out of it. So uh, it is very high, heavily capital intensive, of course, as you know, so you need to plan how you're going to uh, arrange that capital. Uh, of course, you know, the first thought comes to mind that we're going to go to the banks, but banks won't sort of you know, lend their hands straight on every acquisition. Again, it's very industry specific. A lot of times they need a security. So if a business is of the nature, which has an underlying security in terms of physical assets, um, some of the goodwill would be considered by the bank because uh, they are in a reputable industry. They are uh, franchise, quality franchise industries, or they are some uh, highly reputable service industries like uh, like accounting, insurance, um, uh, legal, and things like that. So, uh, so you have to see how much capital would be available through through that debt funding from the banks, and it's never going to be hundred percent. So you have to have your own capital required to to be able to make it. So that first step is you can't start with the capital acquisition. So you need to build a bit of a mass, unless you've got plenty of cash, inheritance or something, you know, stacked yep. away. And got lucky, yeah. Lucky, yeah, that's right. Or you had some sort of silver spoon, you know, okay, well, I'm going to go out and do some shopping. Uh, and But uh, uh, otherwise, you know, any sort of entrepreneurial journey, you know, you're taking the baby steps, you're establishing yourself, you're trying to save some money, you're creating a bit of a capital, uh, and then, you know, you take that first step of, of a small acquisition, take the banks into confidence, prove your, your strength and capabilities and your track record and history. And, of course, the reputation comes with it. I mean, if that's an industry where the seller is going to, to measure you on. So if you once you've ticked all, all those sort of boxes, you put the whole thing together, you start, uh, uh, you start your target uh, sort of process, um, have the conversations and then sort of various steps involved from there onwards. And that again is, I mean, I wouldn't go into too much detail because then, you know, okay, you having what's the sort of whole process, uh, you know, starting from, uh, you know, term sheets and heads of agreements and going into, you know, contractual uh, part of it and then due diligence and then sort of con uh, uh, settlement. So that's all legal and, uh, uh, compliance process starts from there. I think and it would be great to have an interview around that at a later date, though. Yeah, that, yeah, uh, that right. would be great. Yeah, definitely. That's what I said. It's you know, it's probably it's it's another interview if we if to go into that, that details. But it is very important the whole process because a lot of things can go wrong in mm. that entire process. So you need to be sort of quite mindful of um, and and be prepared for that. So Dinesh, again, um, lots of insights in there around, you know, we have to have some organic growth anyway. Are we able to sustain ourselves through organic growth? Um, buying a business or acquiring a business is not about picking one from a, you know, a website and then making the purchase. You really have to be able to prove yourself. People who are selling are typically looking for a good relationship and knowing that you're going to look after their customers and their clients make sure that you have some sort of stability 
within your own business to be able to acquire capital or to go and look at some fundraising so that you can, you know, make these acquisitions. And then it's about relationships. How do you start that conversation um, to earn some trust, to be able to go in, into the negotiation um, stages of a business? Exactly, yeah. And then, then, the, then the fun really starts. I would actually really like to in- interview you that I'm really interested on the whole um, the issues that are going to arise on acquiring a new business and introducing yourself to new staff and a new you know what is it like in regional how are you accepted um, what are how what's it like introducing yourself to the client I'd really love to yeah can, can we pencil that in now for another um, interview yeah, uh, go that, for would, it. that would be great. <laughs> but look, we've, my favorite topic, I, I can keep talking on it. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. It only takes one idea or one insight from a listener, you know, to change the, the direction of their business. Um, and it all goes back to ambition as well. What was your ambition? I love your story on there when you're talking about your this little pinhead of a business and um, with a big ambition, but look where you are now. It's, you know, you're there, you're nailing it. So listen, Dinesh, thank you very much. The insights that you've shared around this growth and expansion series have been absolutely phenomenal. Yet again, you're making a difference to business owners who are listening and watching. You're making a difference to me. I can then go and coach you for all the tips that we are learning. But thank you very much for sharing your knowledge, your time and your wisdom. Thank you so much, Lorraine. My pleasure. Thank you. I look forward to the next series. Thank you, Dinesh. Bye-bye. You've been listening to District 32, immersion, inspiration for ambitious business owners with big dreams.